Hello, it's a real pleasure to greet you in the name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ to this the first of our online worship offerings for 2022. I'd also like to say a special welcome to members of our own fellowship here in South End. Unfortunately, due to uncertainties surrounding the Omicron variant of COVID-19, we've taken the decision, as have many Salvation Army Corps and churches around the UK, to temporarily suspend meeting together in person. As you can see, Trace is not with me today. We're still officially taking time out to relax, but she will be back next week. And she does, along with me, want to wish you all a very blessed, successful and healthy new year. I'd like to take some time just now to thank those of you who sent us cards and gifts over Christmas. What an unexpected delight that was. We received cards not only from people in the UK that we only know through online worship, but also from Australia, New Zealand, Canada and America. And we got some chocolates all the way from Rochdale in Lancashire. Milk chocolate for Tracy and dark chocolate for me. So somebody was obviously paying attention. Anyway, thank you so much for your kindness. You'll never know how much of a blessing it was during such a busy and demanding time of the year. Our opening today featured some photographs which I took in South End in the run up to Christmas. Some of the sunrises and sunsets in this part of the world really are amazing. The song that we listened to as we looked at those images was of course written by Will Brand and Eric Ball and it introduced our theme for today which is that God is close by. Our opening song is At the Name of Jesus Every Knee Shall Bow. Let's sing together.
The Salvation Army has always been blessed with some wonderful poets and composers and our next song exemplifies this fact. Played by Nathan Bright, we're going to listen to Andrew Maycock's arrangement of Breathe and Be Still. Then I'm going to pray and after I've prayed we'll join together in the hymn New Every Morning is the Love. Let us pray together. Loving Heavenly Father, we enter this new year with a degree of uncertainty in our hearts and minds. We know that we are loved by you. We know that we are loved by you perfectly and that perfect love drives out all fear. Yet we confess there is still anxiety in our hearts as we look at the the days and weeks and months that lie ahead. We pray that you would help us to be aware of your presence because it's in your presence and only in your presence that we find peace. 
Father, we know that many people struggle over the Christmas period as they remembered loved ones that have gone before them to, to heaven. We are especially aware at this time in South End of friends of ours, members of our fellowship who suffered a, a terrible and unexpected tragedy just before Christmas. You know who they are and we pray for them all, especially just now. We ask you to surround them in your love and to give them a deep sense of your peace. Father, we pray for our global congregation. We thank you for them. We thank you for their kindness that they showed to us over Christmas, for their thoughtfulness. We don't take that for granted. And we pray that through this worship we share with them this morning, they would feel drawn close to you and become aware of your presence. We pray, Father, that this time of worship would be acceptable to you and that you would yourself be blessed by what we bring. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would speak to us clearly, that we would hear your voice and that we would be transformed as a result of being in your presence and worshipping you during this time we spend together. We make this prayer in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Our Bible reading today are some very well-known verses and I make no apology for using them on many occasions in our online worship but they come from Paul's letter to the church at Philippi and it's just five verses chapter 4 verses 4 to 9. Rejoice in the Lord always I say it again rejoice let your gentleness be obvious to everyone. God is close by. Do not be anxious about anything, but in all things, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, 
will keep your hearts and minds safe in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things and the God of peace will be with you. Amen.
Well, that was, of course, the irrepressible uh, Bethel kids with Amazing Grace. Now, we're going to sing again, and it's a song that I find myself drawn to at the start of every new year, because it reminds us that we should never take life for granted. It, it reminds us by helping us to recognise that every day comes to us as a consequence of God's mercy. From the pen of Albert Osborne, let's sing together, yet once again, by God's abundant mercy, we join our song of thankfulness and praise. Then after we've sung, there will be an opportunity to give in the offering. I'm pleased to say that both Dennis and Margaret are both feeling a little bit better and have provided us this week with a recording of the beautiful hymn, He Leadeth Me.
Well, sitting here at the start of a new year, it is impossible to look forward without a certain amount of anxiety. Our expectation of the future has a tendency to be coloured by our experience of the past. And as 2020 and 2021 turned out to be probably the most unusual years any of us have experienced, we find ourselves looking forward to the new year perhaps more pessimistically than we ordinarily would. I wonder if you've ever asked yourself why some apparently unpleasant and even pointless things exist in our world. For example, flies, wasps, stinging nettles and viruses. Well, flies live by eating our rubbish. Our daughter Charlotte is uh, an ICU nurse in Withenshaw Hospital in Manchester, but last year she was working on a ward and um, she caught COVID back in March 2020. Fortunately, she wasn't too poorly at the time, but she did lose her sense of taste and smell. And sadly, she still hasn't fully recovered from the loss of these senses nearly two years on. But at that time, she had a patient on her ward who, following an operation to remove both of his legs, developed a terrible infection in one of the wounds. The infection was so bad that antibiotics alone, even intravenous antibiotics, were not enough to treat the infection. So the doctors had decided to use maggots. Now maggots are of course baby flies, just as a caterpillar turns into a be beautiful butterfly, so a maggot will develop into a fly. Now, maggots will only eat rotting flesh. And so the doctors applied live maggots to the wound, which they then packed with bandages, knowing that when the maggots got to the end of the infected flesh and got to healthy tissue, they would stop eating. Now, um, Charlotte had no sense of smell at the time, and so she became the person who was most called upon to change this patient's dressing. Some of the nurses found that just opening the door to his room was too much to bear, but Charlotte, because she had no sense of smell, was able to change the dressings with relative ease. If there were no flies in the world, we would be swamped by the carcasses of dead animals. Wasps eat insects such as green fly and other small bugs. Without wasps, we would be plagued by these pests. Did you know that stinging nettles can be used to treat people with inflammatory conditions like osteoarthritis? <clears throat> when you're stung by a stinging nettle, the chemicals that are released into your bloodstream, they, they stop the production or they slow the production of inflammatory prostaglandins these, these cells in your body, as a result of the stinging nettles, begin to retreat. Now, these cells are normally a vital part of the body's immune system. But in people with inflammatory conditions like arthritis, they can sometimes hinder rather than help. So doctors have found that by treating people with stinging nettles, they can both reduce pain and lower a patient's dependency on painkillers. Stinging nettles also used to be used by Roman soldiers who were stationed in Britain. They used to whip their legs with stinging nettles to generate warmth, a bit like somebody today um, applying a deep heat pad. Now, when we think of viruses, we probably think that their sole purpose is to wreak havoc on society and to bring suffering to humanity. Millions of people over time have died as a result of viruses. The Justinian plague in the 6th and 7th centuries wiped out about a third of the global population. The Black Death or the plague uh, killed about 40% of those living at the time. The 1918-1919 flu pandemic killed somewhere between 50 
and 100 million people in just two years. And that equated to about 10% of the global population. Amazingly, more people died from influenza in 1918 than died in the whole of the Great War. Perhaps the most deadly virus that has ever existed is smallpox. It's impossible to calculate how many people died from this terrible disease, but the mortality rate was very high, with three out of every 10 people who contracted the virus losing their lives. In the 19th century, in Europe alone, approximately 500,000 people died every year as a result of smallpox. The current COVID-19 pandemic is just one in a series of ongoing and never-ending deadly viral assaults. Now, if we could wave a, a magic wand and cause all viruses to disappear, I'm sure that most of us would jump at that opportunity, especially now. Yet this would be a deadly mistake. Deadlier, in fact, than any virus could ever be. According to epidemiologists, if all viruses were to suddenly disappear, the world would be a wonderful place for about a day and a half, and then we'd all die. You see, viruses are responsible for all kinds of good things, and most of them are not dangerous to human beings. Did you know that viruses are responsible for purifying our oceans or that they contribute significantly to the production of oxygen? Viruses kill off other pathogens. They train our immune systems and make us stronger. Viruses have played an essential part in guiding our evolution. Of course, there is a tremendous amount we don't know about viruses. But what we do know, what we do know for certain, is that without viruses, life and the planet as we know it would cease to exist. And even if we wanted to, it would be impossible to eliminate every virus currently on the earth today. According to the experts, viruses do far more good than harm. Usually, when we look at things that appear at first glance to be bad, a little bit of research will quickly reveal to us the hidden benefits that hide behind them. But sometimes in life, we have to accept that there is no silver lining. Sometimes things happen to us which, however we dress them up, cannot be seen as a blessing, not even a blessing in disguise. Although we believe, just as Paul did, that all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose, from our human perspective, there are many times when we can see no justifiable reason for our suffering. There have been many times when Tracy and I have carried out pastoral visits to people recently bereaved, especially when the bereavement was unexpected and premature, when it's been almost impossible to find appropriate words of comfort. Sometimes there are no easy explanations for suffering. Sometimes we just have to own up to the fact that life is unfair. And some events are inexplicable and difficult to justify. Of course, as Christians, we believe in the power of prayer. And we always follow Paul's teaching to pray for those who are unwell. But as we have said many times in the last two years, sometimes our prayers seem to go unanswered. I suffer with chronic pain due to problems with my joints. I have problems with my spine, shoulders, hips and knees. And although I've had some surgery which has helped and will be having further surgery in a couple of months, this pain is always going to be with me. 
My daughter Bethany also suffers with chronic pain. I think that actually we both do a relatively good job at hiding this pain from other people, but Tracy of course is certainly aware of how it impacts our lives. At 60, I guess it's understandable that I'm having problems with my joints. <clears throat> As we get older, we expect our bodies to begin to wear out. However, Bethany is only 23, and because of her complex medical needs, following her last bone density scan, she was told that her bones were similar to those you would expect to find in someone in their 80s. Now, because both Bethany and I suffer from Crohn's disease, we can't take anti-inflammatory drugs or powerful painkillers. So it's something that we've both learnt or are learning to put up with. <clears throat> Sometimes, whether it's a quality of life issue or one of quantity, there are no easy answers. Now, if we're hoping to move into 2022 with some foolproof formula that will protect us from suffering, then we are going to be very disappointed. Even as Christians, our privileged position in Christ does not give us immunity from suffering. I was looking at a, a protest the other day in America where a Christian was holding up a banner saying that he was fully vaccinated in the blood of Jesus. Well, take it from me, that's a nonsense. And far from being an expression of faith is heresy. When it comes to things like COVID-19, there is no discrimination whatsoever. So what can we turn to for comfort? It's funny, you know, but just along the side of me here, you can't see them, is a sideboard which is covered in peanuts and chocolates and snacks and Christmas cake and everything else, which we're gradually chipping away at over the Christmas period. And uh, when Tracy and I were preparing this sermon together and I got to that line, what can we turn to for comfort during this difficult period? She pointed to the sideboard and all the food that's there. But seriously, what can we turn to for comfort? As we prepare ourselves to face another uncertain year, what can we find that can offer some kind of hope or support? Now, I make no apology this morning for returning once again to Philippians chapter 4. I think by now, if you join me this regularly, you will know that this is one of my favourite Bible readings. Now, that's not because I'm lazy or unfamiliar with the Word of God. It's simply because some passages lend themselves to certain circumstances. And the advice given by Paul to the Philippians in this chapter could not be more appropriate for us today, even if it had been written yesterday. The one thing, perhaps the only thing we can be absolutely certain of as we move into 2022 is that God is close by. There is no power on earth that can separate us from the presence of God. As John reminds us in chapter one of his uh, letter, his first letter, sorry, as John reminds us in chapter one of his first letter, God is love. And in Romans chapter eight, Paul confirms that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. In verse 38, of Romans chapter 8, Paul starts to tell us that he is convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is ours in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul recognises that simply being aware of God's closeness is enough to remove all anxiety. It's in those intimate moments with God that we are able to share with him all of our fears, all of our doubts, all of our concerns. Yet Paul also recognises 
that God's presence is not just the place where we can make our requests known to him, but it's a place where we are also encouraged to count our blessings. Paul says, make your requests known to God, but do it with thanksgiving. No doubt many t people at this time of year will have made or will be thinking about making New Year's resolutions. Some people will have decided to eat less, to exercise more, to establish a, a better work-life divide, to spend more quality time with family and friends, or perhaps not to take each other for granted. But whatever our resolutions, or even if we haven't made any, a life well-lived begins and ends in the presence of God. Now, I can't give you any promises about the future. Like everybody else, I can't tell you what's going to happen in the next 10 minutes, let alone the next year. But what I can tell you and tell you with certainty is that by regularly spending time in the presence of God, you will possess a peace which can keep your hearts and minds safe in Christ Jesus. In a moment, we're going to listen to a very well-known song which has become a favourite of many people over the last 20 years or so. Be still, for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is here. Now, as we listen to these words in a reflective way, or perhaps sing along, I would encourage you to take time to make yourself aware of God's presence. The last verse of this song says, Be still, for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. He comes to cleanse and heal, to minister his grace. No work too hard for him. In faith, receive from him. Be still. For the power of the Lord is moving in this place. And of course, this place refers to wherever you are right now listening to this sermon. God can move in that place, whether it's your front room or your bedroom or your conservatory, just as much as he can move in a crowded church building. God is not limited by where we find ourselves. In a much older song, written over a hundred years ago, John Oxenham says, Come, occupy my silent place and make thy dwelling there. More grace is wrought in quietness than any is aware. I really do hope and pray that 2022 will be a good year for you and a better year for us all. But remember, whatever happens, Nothing can separate us from the love of God which is ours in Christ Jesus. Whatever you do this year, whatever happens, whatever your circumstances, whatever tragedies hit you, make sure that you take time every day to experience God's presence in your life. Because if you do, then you will know at all times and in all circumstances, his peace. And that peace will keep your hearts and minds safe in Christ Jesus. May God bless you and stay safe. Oh,
Well, since we last joined together for worship, or at least since we last recorded online worship, we were saddened to hear of the promotion to glory of Commissioner Harry Reid, Order of the Founder. Commissioner Harry was loved by all UK Salvationists and many others around the world. We don't have time to pay him the kind of tribute today that he deserves, but let me just say personally that both as my training principal and as British Commissioner, he was especially kind and supportive to me, even on those occasions when I didn't deserve his love. He will be dearly missed and we want to remember his son and daughter, Margaret, sorry, John and Margaret, and their respective families at this difficult time. And in his honour, we're going to conclude with a song written by the Commissioner and John Larson. We're going to fill, fill, fill the world with music. We're going to smile, 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 and not frown. And then our benediction this week is also from the pen of Harry Reid. Words set to music by Howard Davies, and, and words that fit in so well with our theme this week, become aware of him. And then Egon Virtuosi Brass will play us out with Eric Silverberg's march, Fill the World with Music. God bless you, and until next time, stay safe. <laughs>
Amen. Amen.